Hey, peoples. So I know you're probably looking at this review title and thinking, I thought he said he was only going to review recently released movies. Uh, well, I'm kind of cheating here because this movie was recently released on uh, digital download, so you can actually go online and buy it. And the reason I'm reviewing this movie is because when it was theatrically released, it was in a small number of theaters, and a lot of people did not see this movie or have never heard of this movie. And like I mentioned a couple reviews ago, uh, I have a top list of the movies I've seen so far this year. It's on my Twitter. If you go to a Clark Kent type, it's pinned at the top. And at the top of that list is this movie, The Last Black Man in San Francisco. And no, it's not about like he's the only black man in one city. It's not about that. That's in reference to pretty much gentrification in his area. But I'm kind of going too far ahead. Just to tell you the plot of the movie, basically, Jimmy lives with his best friend, and they are kind of what seems to be on the outskirts of San Francisco. They're not deep within the city. They have to travel to get there. And so every, pretty much every day, Jimmy goes to this specific house. You find out that that's the house that he grew up in because that's the house that his grandfather built with his own two hands, and someone else lives there. They got kicked out of the house a long time ago when his grandfather passed away. They lost the house. But, um someone else lives there and Jimmy continually comes there and tries to work on the house to the annoyance of the actual owners. So somebody in the owner's family dies and you find out that they apparently own the house and they didn't leave a will to the person living there and they have siblings. So now the house is basically, you know, just sitting there until they figure out who actually gets the house in the dispute within the family. So while it's sitting there, Jimmy decides, hey, you know, him and his best friend should break into the house and become squatters. Basically, it's his house. So why not? He's going to live there. And that's what this movie's about. The acting in this movie is incredible. I did not know Danny Glover was in this movie. I did not know Mike, Mike Epps was in this movie. I did not know a lot of people in this movie. But even though they were great in the small roles they were in, because they're all in very small roles, the main actor, Jimmy, is incredible. Never seen this dude before, but he is so good. And the guy that plays his best friend, I believe, is Jonathan Majors, or I'm, I'm not sure if that's right. I think that's his name. He blew me away. Like, he was so great in this movie. Again, never seen him before. This movie does a great job at giving you dark and deep conversations and concepts and themes, but masking with comedy. This movie has stuff about gentrification. This has stuff about growing up in living a certain legend that you were told, living a certain life you were told, uh, growing up in a certain area and letting that area mold you maybe into something you don't necessarily want to be or something you don't strive to be. For example, there's a scene in this movie where the main actor, Jimmy, he sees his dad and his dad says, why are you dressed like a white boy? It's just a very interesting movie with great concepts throughout the movie. And the visuals are incredible. Some of it kind of reminds me of a Wes Anderson film, like some of the shots not in a whole, but some of the shots. The director is the best friends of the actual main actor. I think his name is Joe Talbot. He did a really great job. This movie visually looks incredible. I loved it. And it's really one of the best movies of the year so far. I was really disappointed that a lot of people had never heard of it, never seen it. And I think around the time it came out, there were other bigger movies in theaters like Men in Black and I think, I think Shaft was out. But those movies are getting bad reviews. This movie, which no one had barely heard of, was getting great reviews. And it was incredible. And it was by two people that are relatively unknowns, pretty much. And they knocked it out of the park. This movie is one of the best movies of the year so far, and it probably will be one of the best movies of the year as we get to the end of the year. I'm not saying it's going to stay at the top of my list, but it will definitely be in my list. If you have not seen this movie, go download it. It's only like $14 online, I think. Give it money. We need more movies like this. These smaller, non-giant budget movies that actually tell a story. It's not a recycled movie. It's not a reboot. It's not a remake. It's not a sequel. It's something new and fresh. We need more movies like this. So please go support this movie. It's amazing. Go check it out. As always, guys, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for listening. Please share the show. Tell other people about it. I'm going to try to put the whole review on Instagram. I don't know how to make the 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 instagram tv parameters i've tried like all day it's it was aggravating i i don't know the right parameters so this might be a small box in the middle of the screen just don't mind it but uh please share it i'm on youtube instagram twitter uh everything at another movie review on twitter it's another movie rev so go follow there as always thanks for listening guys i really appreciate it have a great day god bless talk to you tomorrow